Hello, welcome ladies and channels. Brian Stratton here, your host of How to Bachelor with a video on 10 hidden gems of the original Xbox. And these are games that have, you know, flown over the radar for almost 20 years now, for some case, about 15 for others. These games, 2001 to 2006 release. Here beside me, I got Stubbs the Zombie. Without it being mentioned so many times in Hidden Gems videos, who knows had it just been re-released or ported to how I, however they did it here lately on the Switch and Sony and Microsoft systems. And then there's a game right there, such as Playboy the Mansion, which in my opinion is the best ever sim game ever. I obviously will not have footage for that game for obvious reasons nor stubs the zombie being that that game is out now best soundtrack ever i haven't tested the new re-release so i don't know if it's the same soundtrack but if it is the same original as the game you love it so without further ado let's talk about 10 great original xbox games that you need to be playing All right, starting off here with number 10. You like some smashing, bashing, beat em up, fighting game from from software? We got the Otagi series, like, as a whole. Hidden gem. You know, this is the definition of a hidden gem. Sold less than 100,000, yet yeah, has Metacritic around 80 for the two games. These were part of the Sega package of uh, the 13 exclusives, and it was great. Um, two holds up better than the first one, obviously. You know, it also came out in 04, so hasn't been around as long, obviously, as the first one being its sequel. But as you see, you just, like, wreck stuff. Think uh, Devil May Cry before... There probably was a Devil May Cry, but absolutely be beautiful game and pretty tough. Moving on to number nine, if you like some westerns that are absolutely beautiful, and oh, by the way, let's throw in vampires and other craziness, and then, oh, by the way, let's make it look like black. And while we're at it, let's start off the game with you robbing a train with some revolver action, man, you win with Capcom's Dark Watch. Now, this was released on the PlayStation 2 as well as the Xbox, but the Xbox is the best place to play it. And also, I mean, Jennifer Hell voice acting, Rose McGowan voice acting is some of the supporting members just absolutely great great job great reception not too many people are talking about it there hasn't been an, a follow-up of this but absolutely great game that you need to try out if you still have an original xbox and microsoft how about bringing it forward how about some tenchu like game but with hot chicks that were semi revealing outfits does that sound like something that a bachelor would like i mean as you see it's uh it could be uh pretty dark and you want to be stealthy and kill people i don't know if this was like another way to try to get into japan but hey metacritic doesn't seem to like this game but if you like fan service and you're a dude and you like seeing large spurts of blood, you may want to check this game out. So the next game that we are going to show, this was probably at the height of like the Resident Evil series. I want to say 4 had just been out and was game of the year. So Ubisoft was like, hey, Darkworks, what's up? Can we get like, some Resident Evil 4-esque game, but, like, on a ship in the middle of a storm. I'm like, sure, why not? Also a game that was 
also released on to the PlayStation 2, but best played on Xbox is Cold Fear. Absolutely amazing game. If you get motion sick, you may want to be careful um, in this game because, man, the boats are rocking. Don't come a-knocking. If you're outside, be wary of those waves because they can and will hurt you. It's like, it's great. It's something that I wish that they would like continue because who doesn't like Resident Evil? It's kind of another way to play the series, so why not? And this was also a later game in the Xbox life. I mean, this is coming up on 360 release, so at the point it's like, why bother? You know, getting games, and that's how a lot of the games that are on this like kind of got missed for the most part. Aside from, like, maybe not so great box art, but check this game out. Next up, we got another game from part of the Sega line that Smilebit did. Smilebit also did uh, Jet Set Radio Future, another great game that's great that you could usually get on the Sega GT uh, 2002 um, dual disc um, game, but Gun Valkyrie, absolutely great that this had a 2002 launch and I'm just kind of showing this footage from uh, Metal Jesus because I'm bad at it, bad at controlling. Next up, we got a shooter that launched in August of 2006. So, you know, the 360 had already been out like nine months by this time. This is almost five years after the release of the Oh, gee, so, I mean, it was still kind of relevant. Cyanide, man, starts off crazy like a witch, be, like, going to the stake, and then she's like, Mother Flower, you must be a twin-stick shooter taking on all these other ship-like things. I mean, this is when people weren't really liking them, some twin-stick shooters so much. But it's actually a really great game. Lots of levels crazy shooting um almost near bullet hell at times i would say but definitely missed and it does have some multiplayer i can't even pronounce the developer of it but uh play logic entertainment i could easily all i had to do is try moving on to what's considered a launch title i guess because you know it launched on christmas of 01 and you know that's a month and 10 days after but Blood Wake. What's awesome about Blood Wake is when I got like back into it after like trying it a few times, it's like, dude, this kind of reminds me of Archer season three, or maybe it was four, whatever. The one where Archer's on like the island staying away from his mom because she ended up getting married and he's basically the dictator of this little island and they got like a rugby like team and stuff and they're basically pirates. That's kind of like what this is, you know, on con on water combat. And games like this aren't really around anymore. So, like, if they could bring this back, that would be great. Like, you know, the Xbox Live Arcade isn't a thing anymore, but that would have been probably the last chance. Now, here is another great game that, like, if you like Crimson Skies, I'm not saying that this game... Is as good as Crimson Skies. It was nowhere near reviewed like Crimson Skies. And it doesn't it didn't have a multiplayer mode, and that's probably where it also hurt. But Jaeger still is a great game. I wanna say there's twenty some odd missions where you're a dog fighting, and at times you could also like just plant so you could basically be a turret or tank almost. Um, but in the air to shoot like pinpoint sniper accuracy absolutely insane really good game that uh people should give another chance and it had all types of different publishers there was thq on the european side chemco for north america dreamcatcher for the pc so there's a lot of people that helped out uh, jaeger development on this next up is probably one of my favorite non-burnout racers from 
6th gen, and that's test drive EVA destruction. Now, like a lot of old timers will be like, dude, how do you uh, test drive the hidden gems video? And it's like, well, is test drive even really around anymore? I mean, I haven't seen a test drive game since this. I mean, maybe there were some. I don't remember it. But absolutely great. Next up, number one, The Punisher. And going back to Test Drive, Demo Derby, man. Great. And you can listen to your rep games. And that's the same with quite a few of these games, where if you could, like, play and listen to music, I know that sounds kind of not so high speed nowadays, but it was great back in the day. Punisher kind of fell under the whole... It's releasing and the 360s coming out again type trope. You know, a 2005 release. It wasn't the most popular by reviewers, but gamers, man, absolutely love it. I mean, think Max Payne with Splinter Cell with, uh, like, Mad World eventually. I mean, it is insane what you could do. It's like, you want to rock two sawed-off shotguns? Why not? You want to interrogate someone, and when you're done, throw them in a wood chipper? Sure, you're the Punisher. Why not? I mean, Frank Castle, Mother Flower, you do what you do. You know, so absolutely amazing. Great game. And those are like 10 greats. And, I mean, I could go on. Like when um, It was kind of hard to do... Like the Sega ones, because they've been shown... I mean, all these games have been shown as uh, Hidden Gems probably by, you know, someone or not. You know, right there I got the uh, Jaeger and, uh, what was it, uh, Gun Valkyrie from uh, Metal Jesus. Um, like I mentioned, so many people did Stubbs the song. No one's really doing a Playboy the Mansion on um, Hidden Gem, and that's because, I don't know, maybe they're... Scared to admit that they played it or what, but yeah, I mean, I got it. And literally, your Hugh, it's been years since I played it, but your Hugh Hefner, like in the 60s or 70s, like when you first get the mansion and first start up the company, and basically you're all about producing like the first issue, and you find your models and you're the cameraman. Well, you got to hire a crew, but basically, you control the camera and when to take the snaps of the poses and then you have parties at the mansion and become friends. I guess like I've only played like one of the Sims games and I didn't play it long, but it looks like it plays a lot like that, you know, like life sim to that effect. And you have a goal in the Sims. I never really remember there being a goal. It's like, you know, you obviously want to have a, a famous uh, magazine, empire um and get the mansion going decorate it out deck it out grotto it out you know do all that stuff without all the uh stds and uh gonorrhea syphilis and s stuff like that so now that's just a list of 10 games i did mention some others uh basically anything sega that didn't sell well or that has sega branding publishing is pretty much a safe bet uh xbox wasn't so great at like putting out certain games back then uh there's a lot of good third person shooters some try to be halo killers so they kind of like shot themselves in the foot especially the ones that were exclusives going after microsoft's baby back then when halo was good so yeah and I would love for these to uh, get backwards compatibility. Um, I don't know, some with it is like getting it on the Microsoft Store or licensing or they're not able to emulate it or what being that, you know, there was a few hundred games backwards compatible from the X to the 360, but then when it comes from the X to the the original to the Xbox One and series of consoles it's only 39 or 38 or whatever so i mean i would love for them to open their whole library so that way i could try all my 600 xbox games on the series of consoles with auto hdr or now um fps boost you know that's pretty cool 
that they're doing that some of these games would really benefit from that um hopefully like fable that's a backwards compatible game that was only 30 ish when that was on the xbox i have not seen anything on how it does on the one or the series i imagine it's like 30 they didn't do anything to it but if they could make that more smooth that'd be great all games need to be at a minimum of 60 just my opinion it's a reason why i play a lot of the games that are 30 if they're on the pc i'll i'll play in there if they're 60 that's passable for me on the console so anyway i hope you like this video i make new ones every friday morning 10 a.m eastern standard is when they release every monday wednesday friday a live stream 7 p.m eastern standard if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with a friend leave a comment down below if you hate it look, tell me why any you know news footage is good for me so thank you very much i will see you in the next one later